Good morning everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you're safe and I hope you're well in these weird and wonderful times. Today, my friends, I'm going to talk to you about photo films and how I create my photo films. This is one of the questions I get asked the most. You will have seen on the channel previously lots of my photo films. Recently, I did one about a photo shoot I did on a beach in Spain, for example, which is this one. Now, the key thing about a photo film and any film, whether it's moving stills or whether it's actual footage, is the audio. It is probably the most important thing. Can you imagine, for example, Jaws without the very, very uh, famous, iconic soundtrack that goes with it? Or could you imagine a film, watching a TV show, where the audio is slightly out of sync and, and, and that just sounds terrible and it really, really disturbs the viewing pleasure? So today I'm going to show you how I set up my photo films. Now I use Premiere Pro to do mine. However, you can use very similar processes in iMovie or Windows Movie on a Windows machine, or indeed you can use a very similar process in Premiere Pro Elements or Premiere Elements, I think it's called. As I said, the single most important thing I think is getting the sound right. You have to get the mood right. You have to get the feeling right. So, for example, that very slow, melancholic sound that I just played you in the beach photo film wouldn't really work very well in this film that I did several years ago now about the kids. It was 24 hours and maybe 2,000 pictures, I don't know. So have a quick look at, the, at this one. So you can see the difference. The difference in the audio is substantial, of course. The mood, the feel, everything about it is very, very different. Right, so we're going to dig into Premiere Pro and I'm going to show you exactly how I've built that beach photo film from start to finish in Premiere Pro. And remember, the principles are the same in other applications. Now, I use a website called Artlist and Artlist is a royalty-free music website. There are several of them out there, but Artlist is the one that I choose. Now, as usual, of course, with a video like this, if you do subscribe, to Artlist using the link below, you will get two months extra free on your subscription. Now, as I said, Artlist supply royalty free music, and that is crucial, absolutely crucial. The last thing you want is for YouTube or Facebook or wherever you're putting your uh, photo films to be flagged for copyright violation. That's definitely something you want to avoid. Now, the great thing about Artlist and the reason why I use them is that their licenses are firstly, they're verified with YouTube, so that's all good to go, but also the licenses are eternal. So if I stop using Artlist in the future, they're not going to suddenly come back to me and say, hey, you used one of our songs in one of your films three years ago and you have to stop now, which is really important for me. Okay, let's pop into Premiere Pro and get going. Okay, so here we are in Premiere Pro and I've already created this project before. So uh, this is the structure of the bins. I've got the stills, I've got the sequence and I've got the audio at the top. Now, once you've imported the stills, I do my stills at 16 by nine, just select one, right click and choose a new sequence from clip. And that will create a clip that is the right sequence size for the image that you've got. So you don't need to do any resizing or anything like that afterwards. So I'm just going to drag that sequence back so it's at the top level. Close the folder down. Just going to rename that sequence just to give it something more uh, rememberable. We'll call it new film. Why not? And there we go. Now the next thing I'm going to do is remove the clip from the sequence because that was just used to set up the sequence. And I'm going to go and select all of the images in the sequence or all of the images that I'm going to use in a photo film. Right click, speed duration. Now by setting this to two or three seconds, I'm immediately, I'm already saying to Premiere, when you bring these images onto the timeline, I want them to be at this particular length rather than having to do them all individually. So it's a starting point. Now I'm just going to drag all of the images onto the timeline in one. I'll stretch it out so we can see. 
So there we are, they're all on the timeline in exactly the same length at the moment. And really the next point is to bring the audio in. Now you'll see that I've already got the audio that I want in this photo film. There it is, an artless song of course. And I'm not going to just simply drag that on because I want to show you how I would go to Artlist and choose a song to use in a photo film. Okay, so what I like to do is actually find a song and press play in the browser and then flip back to Premiere and see what it sounds like. So we'll pick that one and we'll flip over. Okay, so that one definitely didn't work. Let's try this one down here, see what happens. So that one was closer, but not quite what I want. So the one I actually chose is down at the bottom of my list. Here it is by Gale. Okay, so I'm happy with that song. So I'll just select a web file and it will download it. And once it's finished downloading, I'll simply bring that into Premiere Pro and I've got my file ready to use, and there it is. I'm gonna drag the file onto the timeline, into the audio part, into the audio mix, and there it is. And if I just press, I'm gonna widen it out a little bit, and if I just press play, Okay, so next thing I'm going to do is widen or heighten, make it bigger, the audio mix. And you can start seeing the beats here. As I scrub, you'll see. And you can just see where the peaks are, where the beat of the track are. So the way I do this is I just move everything by the first clip, first image, right across. And simply, just a visual way of doing it initially is to just drag each image to the peak move it across, next one, next one, next one. You can get plugins to do this, but I've never found one that works very reliably. So we'll just do it like that. And let's have a quick look. Okay, so that's a good start, that's okay. So they're all added in and we'll just have a quick play. Yeah, okay, seems okay at the moment. I'm happy with the, the beat matching that I've done. So I feel like this one might be a little bit long across here. It's just a little bit long there. So it was too long, so I'm going to go up to the effects panel. I'm going to search for crossfade, uh, cross dissolve, I should say. I'm going to drag that down and just straddle it across the two clips. Yeah, I think that's much better with the crossfade across there. Cross dissolve, I should say. Stop saying crossfade, cross dissolve. That works better. That's the hardest part done, actually, believe it or not, we're nearly there. So you'll see now at the end, because the audio mix finishes before the end of the amount of images, I'm gonna drag it down again. So I've got two tracks, same track, but twice. And if 
you listen carefully there, you you can see the crossover. So this time I'm going to search for exponential fade. I'm going to drop it onto the top one because I want this one to fade out. So I'm just going to double click on the fade itself. I'm going to set that to five seconds and that enables me then to drag this out easier. So I want it to fade out the top track and then constant gain, gain, constant gain. We'll get there on the bottom one. So they just flip over. It's not so pronounced on this audio track, but on others, it's very easy to, to hear the difference. Finally, it's to the titling and this is really what gives the final finishing touches if you like. It's nice to fade that out, fade the text in, fade the music out. It looks good, it looks good at the end. So we'll just drop that exponential fade off. It's too abrupt. You see, it's too abrupt. So we'll put the exponential fade back on. Nice big one. And that's much, much nicer, much smoother. Just disappears out, disappears out. Okay, titles, text. So you'll see here, I've got a, all you need to do is go to essential graphics. You can get third parties of these, or you can just go to the standard browse ones, find one that you like. So let's just say I want that one particular there, drag it onto another timeline or another part of the timeline. And then I can just enter the text that I so wish. Now, of course, I've got one already. So here you can see that I've added the text, the, uh, the credits, if you like, who's involved. And I'm putting a cross dissolve at the front and I'm doing a cross dissolve at the back also. And then at the front of the film, exactly the same thing really, we've got text. Now you'll notice here also that there's a little bit of what's known as black video, because I want the video to start with a little bit of black. So I'm just gonna add black video there, and you can just drag it on again onto your timeline and then size it accordingly. Course we've got one already so and then the text there we go same thing again essential graphics And that's it, that's it. I'm gonna zoom right out so you can see the entire timeline. Really, really simple. The hardest part is the uh, beat matching, which is quite manual, but other than that. Okay, so that was it. It was very straightforward actually in Premiere. And like I said, the same principle applies to uh, any of the photo applications, really any of the, the movie making applications, you can do a very, very similar thing. So the key thing is to select the music. As I said, I use Artlist and get a music track that matches the tone and the mood and the ambience of the film that you're trying to create. Secondly is getting the beat matching right. That's also crucial. You really want the experience of the viewer to be in line with the pictures and the audio. That's super crucial as well. Let's have a quick look at the photo film without any sound.
And now let's have a look at the photo film, not in its entirety because the whole thing is already on the channel, but a little clip of it with the sound that we've selected. Okay, and that's it. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you found it useful. If you did, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button and share away. I'm very happy if you do that. Remember, you can get two months free with your Artlist subscription just by clicking the link below. Have a great day, my friends. Have a happy weekend. Enjoy whatever you're doing and I shall see you on the next video.